I love snow. Let me don't get me wrong, because I, I my first love of meteorology was a blizzard in Ohio. Um, but like Tim, I, when I became a meteorologist and had to forecast for a living, I quickly learned as much as I love snow, I like getting the forecast right more. Um, so you stop wish casting and you start trying to get the forecast correct. I would love to take the highest outlier snowfall map and for that to be reality. But as a meteorologist, I know it's just not going to happen. Um, for every outlier too high, there's an equally low outlier on the bottom side that's equally possible. Like every time I see a, a 12 or 13 inch snowfall forecast, I say, you know, there's an outlier that shows zero and both of those have the same probability of occurring. Um, so I think oftentimes people get caught up in what they want to happen instead of what is going to happen. Um, so it, as a forecaster around here, you learn to like always kind of err on the side of caution a little bit. Not that I go conservative because if I think there's going to be a ton of snow, I will. I just know better that for us to get big snowfall, as Tim's rules alluded to, you almost need a perfect setup. Um, my favorite, my, his favorite rule is, is the snow behind the front. I don't know how many times we see that in the GFS where here comes this front and there's like snow, like a hundred miles behind the front. Cold air chasing the moisture never works out here. I've, I maybe have seen one event where that's actually verified and it was kind of an Arctic front after another front had already gone through. Um, come we refer to those as Anna fronts, you know, there, there's every once in a while you'll get one of those. But it's such a rare occurrence. And the GFS, for some reason, every cold front in the winter has snow on the backside when we know it's not going to happen. It's just too much drying back there. So um, that, that map was made for fun. But I love Tim's rules. Those are, those are the common sense things. And, and I think the more you do stuff like that, as Tim does, it really it gives people confidence. I love when people now will come to me after they see one of those viral Facebook posts about snow and say, Brad, is this legit? And I'll say, what do you think? And it's kind of, kind of answers itself. So, um, it's kind of nice when people check with you when they start seeing these crazy forecasts. <laughs> Absolutely. And somebody was just commenting on the stream, uh, laughing at the North of 85 uh, joke on, on the map. But yeah. in reality, that's somewhat true. And well, especially that's lived in the Carolinas for any lengthy period of time. I mean, yeah, 85 and 40 every single winter. It seems like we're talking about those as the line of, you know, rain, snow. And that's a running joke, especially in the Charlotte area. The last two or three winters, we've had not just a big, like a little difference. I'm talking like northern part of the county, north of 85, has had like seven to 10 inches. And the southern part of the county has had like not, next to nothing. Um, and in Mecklenburg County, it's one school district for all of Charlotte. And it's pretty funny because the whole district will be closed if one part of the district gets snow. So there'll be seven inches of snow in Huntersville, North Carolina, and zero down in Pineville. And the whole district will be closed. And the people on the south side are like, why is school closed? And they don't realize the buses have to go through the whole county. If they can't get to the northern part of the county, they're not going anywhere. Um, so that 85 thing is, is kind of a running joke. But it's, I would say a lot of the time it kind of just bears out because that's kind of the demarcation of just where the cold air damming is a little deeper versus where it's a little more shallow. And I, 